Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a regularly scheduled meeting, uh, electronically scheduled, electronically broadcast uh, of the Sunderland uh, Select Board. If we can call it to order at 637, uh, we're dealing like with many other people, technology right now. And so putting a bunch of people in the same space from all over the world and mostly here in Sunderland is a challenge. Hey, there's Dave. Uh, we have minutes to go through tonight, an emergency, uh, state of emergency update. We'll talk very lightly about the FY21 budget. We keep, as placeholders, uh, draft annual uh, warrant articles, annual town meeting warrant articles, annual meeting motions. We have some updates. Uh, we've also got town administrator updates. We're going to talk about changing the plumbing and gas inspection fees, uh, North Main Street plans and specs work could be interesting. We're going to talk about the Memorial Day Parade. Seems like it's a long way from now, but it's not that far away from now. Uh, I'll start, if we could, reminding people who uh, check out via the variety of means that we have moved the annual town meeting and the annual election to June 5th and 6th in that order. Uh, the town clerk, in talking with her today, reminded me that we have not received ballots here at town, but the information needed to vote uh, via mail or remotely is on the town website. And those requests can be sent to the town clerk. And remember that our election day is the 6th of June. It's still at the library. And the goal would be to have as many uh, remote ballots uh, taken uh, taking the opportunity for as many remote, remote ballots participation as possible. That said, check out the website, contact the town clerk about those steps, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, Tom or Dave want to weigh in on any of the comments going forward before we head into emergency update? I'm going to push minutes to the end, right? Okay. Minutes or minutes. I'm all set, Scott. Yep. Okay. I'm good. Hey, EMD, right I, EMD and uh, Chief of Police are here. EMD, I see you sitting out there. Uh, you're at the, I guess you're at the six o'clock here on the Hollywood Squares tonight. Uh, anything you want to weigh in on? Sure. Um, we received a delivery from the Mass National Guard yesterday of some much needed PPE. Um, we received some Lysol, some surgical masks some thermometers and some Tyvek suits. And tomorrow they are delivering hand sanitizer. Um, I have a question about the, who operates the wastewater treatment plant and do they need PPE? Anything I need to order for them, try to get for them. I would close the loop with Rich Brendan over at uh, Warner Brothers and he would, probably best suit to that. They have some unique PPE requirements, especially with regard to hepatitis and exposure to you know, municipal waste. So mm -hmm. uh, close the loop with Rich and we can do that with uh, through our office and uh, see what those needs are. But that's it's a really good tangential reach out. And it's important to bear in mind, we're talking about a variety of both supplies uh, as well as municipal support. So great, great question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've also received a request for PPE from the Overlook Visiting Nurse Association, who I guess has an office on Sunderland Road. And I reached out to MEMA, wasn't sure what to do with it, and they told me to point them to the direction of the Department of Public Health. So I did that. I've also had a PPE request for masks from Mary DeLusa from the elementary school for her driver's who are delivering meals. Um, I, I told, gave her the form to fill out and to request stuff through the Mac for her. Um, and that's it. Peter, can you close the loop on the drivers from the elementary school through the administration? Okay, we'll do. Hey, uh, Chief, at the same time, does uh, Lori, does, uh, has Lori been in contact with you about PPE? Is that where you would be getting your stuff from? 
Yep, she's uh, helped us out a few times. We just got a recent shipment yesterday, so we're thankful for that. Okay, Chief. Great. So there, there is um, a meeting. So there was a, a there was a morning call. A call morning. Tom and Laura, you guys were both in on that. Anything? Any news from that? That is the Carolyn Ness and Company. Nothing? Okay. No. no. It was a boring meeting. Nicely boring meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, Lori basically got it summed up, Scott. I mean, um, we have had, we have had uh, um, three cases in Sunderland. Um, the Board of Health, did, and I, those are probably, I know at least two of them's already been, they've run their, their course. Um, there was three in Deerfield, three in Whateley, one in Conway. Our, our, we really spent most of our time talking about our senior citizens who appear to be the most uh, um, at risk set of population. And basically, I, I think at right now, we're supposed Last week we delivered 174, we had delivered 174 meals between the three towns. Um, we're doing five days a week. This uh, Frontier is also providing uh, breakfast. Um, so when, they, when someone picks up their meal at the senior center, uh, they're getting that lunch and they're also getting the next day's breakfast at the same time. So I think right now we were okay, we got another board of oversight meeting next Tuesday, Tuesday night where we got a zoom meeting. So I, so yeah, I, I mean, it was pretty quiet. We are looking, they, they were talking about, um, testing, um, and they're trying to get a, uh, a drive through test site set up in, in Franklin County. So they're working on that right now. But yeah, it was, it was actually, um, I think everybody would tell you a very, um, it was a short meeting. If you, it was 30 minutes, which is a very quick meeting. So. Great point. Lori, you want to add anything or echo the same points? Echo the same points. It was my first time attending that meeting. So I had no expectations. <laughs> it, it lasted a lot longer before Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Happy That's to be it. on a short one. Yep. Well, 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 well played. Well played. Okay. No other emergency updates. Again, recognize uh, where your uh, town elements of support are. Obviously, public safety. Our offices remain. The town <laughs> buildings remain closed to the public. However, the services continue. You can contact by electronic means. You can always call. It still works. The phone still works, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, there are people here on their regularly scheduled hours, and they will absolutely get back to you. I want to thank everybody who's doing that work in these difficult times. Uh, you know, we're, we're group-minded we're group uh, uh, by design. And it's just as difficult for people who are isolated at work providing service, not seeing those faces, not interacting in those ways. So keep calling if you need help or any kind of support and uh, we'll keep being there for you. So that said, I'll move off of uh, emergency, state of emergency updates and move uh, down toward select board updates. I'm gonna skip budget warrant article and meeting motions and i say that well i'm going to skip warrant articles and meeting motions go to select board town administrator updates then we'll head to budget so select board updates any um i got a personnel committee meeting on thursday that's uh that's about it right now okay tom um I would I would say we we have a uh, an update on South County uh, Senior Center. We kind of do those on a on a, a much more regular basis right now. 
I would I would uh, um, add that you know having Frontier step up to do breakfast was a was a huge thing for us and Life Path um, for for them to they've expanded that allows us to do Monday through Friday now before we were just doing Monday Wednesday and Friday so for them to step up um, it's greatly appreciated and also we have a number of volunteers that have volunteered to do uh, to pick up meals and and to deliver to deliver them also and and that's a and Scott that's a it's a huge thing so um, I again I, I I would I would say to if anybody knows of their neighbors um, or someone or a family member that 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 could use a meal a week or a couple meals a week or whatever let us know and, and just because you can't get over to Deerfield let us know that we have we have delivery you just have to call up you talk to the uh, center senior uh, senior center uh, director um, I believe the number is six six five two one four one you call up and you just um, make an order it's in and if you can't make the pick up let's let us know and we'll pick it up and somebody will deliver it for you. So, so we haven't had any problem with, with that. I would also, if, while we're on the COVID, I, 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 I understand people are getting itchy to, to do something. Um, we, we are in our area. Uh, I think last was Franklin County had 148 confirmed cases of COVID. I would say that we're, we're probably many more than that. We just, you know, we don't really have the testing. Uh, we don't have a lot of testing that's going on now. Um, and I would just tell people just, just uh, our, our, the, your patience is bearing fruit. And, and that, that's related by the number of, and, and some of the latest things say, you know, we may not see our stuff to more at the end of the month. But right now I would just tell people to hold on, you know, stay the course um, and, and, and maintain a good social distance practice. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you, Tom. Uh, with respect to Slackman's updates, my contribution would be a conference call with Rep. Blay in the four towns. I applaud her efforts to continuing to reach out uh, to her uh, represented communities. Uh, she, I like the format, she says it by block. I think that's on the 15th. And there is a capital planning committee meeting and I looked at my phone, and it stared back at me. So I'm sure it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's coming up soon. Jeff, you want to weigh in for town administrator updates? Sure. Um, just a couple of quick things. One, um, a reminder that street sweeping is planned for um, May 4th and 5th. Um, it's, um, we are working on drafting a letter uh, to allow for emergency deficit spending. If that's necessary, we need to get approval from uh, the director of accounts. So working with staff to figure out what that might look like and, and try and get that squared away. So if it's necessary, we have the approvals all set. Um, oh, the uh, actually one of the things that the senior center and the schools I think are working together on is sort of a pen pal program. And I think that that's kicking off um, nice. pretty soon uh, between elementary school students and, and, and seniors at the senior center. Um, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going, and if I pass the test, I'll be a certified public procurement officer. Hey, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> Uh, and then on Thursday, we had a department heads meeting um, just to discuss what the budget may look like. We had hoped that we would have uh, clearer numbers from the state that was rescheduled from last week to tomorrow. Um, we also talked about emergency dispensing sites, um, remote work, um, and then just sort of general um, department heads and, and uh, issues. So um, I think that that was all I had for the updates. Okay. Um, can we talk briefly about the budget, right? And I say the budget 
dovetailing on what you were mentioning, Jeff, and pinpointing at the top left. I'm going to go to Hollywood Squares and see who is where for <laughs> what season. Um, that said, um, you know, we have sent out correspondence looking at a 3 to 5% uh, reduction of available state revenues as a minimum uh, economic impact. I think as we pay attention toward or pay attention to uh, the state revenue income, its dispensation, of course, will be directly uh, hit. Uh, that said, those letters went out uh, last week, correct, Jeff? We approved them and signed them last week. Maybe they have yet to go out. But anyway, large, three to five percent reduction on state revenue isn't necessarily linear to the totality of our, our impact, but it's still a, a good chunk of revenue that we have to be able to account for. I know, Peter, you were, you were, uh, I chimed in at the last school committee meeting, and I appreciate you guys recognizing me at the end when I finally got there. I know you recognized, I recognize you voted the elementary school budget increase as it was. Uh, and again, I thank you for allowing at the end me to, you know, not necessarily be doom and gloom, but recognize that we may have to revisit that going into annual town meeting as we get closer to our, um, I don't know if we even have real revenues from the state this year currently, uh, but we need to be prepared for that. So that's important. The department heads recognize it, the town residents recognize it, and the elementary and the regional school district recognize it. So that's that's my spiel on, on the whole budget piece. Mr. Tom, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I got, I got a question. You know, the, the House, uh, House, Senate, and the governor signed 4917 that allows for um, deferral of paying taxes and 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 um, interest. Did we want to discuss that? We it, it's actually on the agenda a little later. Yep. Okay. So you want to roll that into the budget discussion? I'm I'm all for it. That's okay. Yeah. I, well, I, I I I it does. I think it I think it does. Why I think it does should be part of our budget discussion um, because what we have in free cash and stabilization, we can kind of use those to offset some of the, the costs why, why we defer, why we defer payments. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a, a encompassing conversation. Let's put that. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, Tom. So I, I spoke with I spoke with Jeff today, and he's we are going to get some homework about what our current percentage of collection is again year on year, and ask the treasurer collector accountant you know where we sit currently as we go about deferring local collection. What does that mean, right? So if we're 50 I'm making numbers up there's no we haven't heard from the appropriate parties if we're 25 or 50 or 75 percent uh through collections then that changes some of our our strategy right so whether it's deficit spending or we annually allow vote town meeting annually votes to allow the treasurer collector to borrow so the treasurer collector can borrow short money as well so there's a handful of mechanisms here that allow us to keep the town running on the check writing side while we wait for the check incoming. Your point, Tom, is about local taxes deadlines. And those deadlines include both missing a deadline, extending a deadline, or extending potential penalties. And if you wanna go there first, I guess I'd like to have a little bit of that background information uh, from the finance team about where are we at and what does it mean for us if we have to go out? You're talking about like a short-term borrowing authorization, kind of like a business would do, for like payroll yep. or something along those lines, right? Yep, that, that's yeah. one That's one of the tools, David, yep. And the legislation yep. that Tom cited allows us to actually deficit spend, which right. is, you know, if we haven't done that since two and a half was resurrected and, or was created in 77. 
Jeff, any, any feedback from treasure collector or accountant as to how we're sitting currently? Yes. Um, I, I can give preliminary information and, and some of my own calculations. Um, from what I understand, uh, the treasure collector said we have about uh, 1.2 million in outstanding um, real estate and uh, personal property tax. Uh, I think real estate tax, which by my calculations, um, based on what the levy was in the last budget cycle, puts us at about 77% collected. Um, and, you know, as far as expenditures, I think um, last year in April, May, and June, is it rough figures, I, I'd say maybe what we spent about 1.6 million. Um, and then what I saw in our general fund as of uh, last week, we had, um, I want to say it was, it was about two and a half million remaining, um, but we had expended nearly 75% and that was 75% through the fiscal year. So I guess we're, we're right on track, um, but it's not like there's a big cushion from, from what I can tell. Right. So Tom, with, with that info, uh, I see, you know, 77% collected and we're about 75% expended. They're not quite tied completely together, but we're in that part of the year right now where the year's, we're in the last quarter of the year. We're beginning winding down pretty darn soon. Chief, don't buy any cruisers. Yeah. Um, Watch out for those cows. For those cows. So <laughs> that, that, that said, uh, we're allowed under that same statute that you cited, Tom, to defer or to extend, not defer, to extend both collection as well as any penalties all the way up to the end of the fiscal year. Is that your prerogative? Well, I, I'm saying that I think it allows, I, I think it says that after um, you have 90 days after the, the governor um, says we're outside of the COVID. So, right. I, and, 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 and I don't think people, if people have having a hard time paying right now, and look, every year we have the same group of people um, or businesses, not, not, not so much businesses, but groups, the same groups that, that have historically for the last 20 years that don't pay their taxes until they go in, you know, they, and there's a process that we follow. But for the, most, most of the people, we, we don't, I would say 95, 98% of the people, they don't have a typically don't have a problem paying taxes this year may be a little be a little different and and I would say if, if it's a business that that can keep their company afloat by not charging them penalties I would say why, why would we charge penalties right now we're not really gaining anything from it so that, yeah I, I would say that we, we should we should you utilize the provisions of the uh, the, the house bill the house and Senate and the uh, the law that the governor just signed Scott Absolutely, in my opinion. Yeah, you have to hand up. Yeah, uh, just just a clarification that uh, the way I understand it is that um, the deadline can be extended to no later than June first, and yes. penalties and interest can be waived up to I think it's actually the twenty ninth or the thirtieth of June, but anything paid after that could still incur penalties. So it it wouldn't be either the end of the fiscal year or 90 days after the emergency. Got it. Got it. That makes sense to be able to line them up at the end of the fiscal year. That makes sense. I would so agree Tom, with Scott. I would agree. You want to put that in the form of a motion or we'll, we'll move this off the docket? Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adopt the tax deadline uh, and penalty deadline extensions as adopted is Mass General Law is it 1947, Tom? Um, 4916 or something, something like that, Scott. How about recently? We'll leave it that way. From the governor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Three to zero, please. Okay. Can I, I'm sorry, uh, does that both extend the, de that motion both extends the deadline and waives interest and waives penalties? Consistent, the way yeah, cons consistent with the, consistent with the governor's uh, bill that he signed into law. Okay. Well, uh, there's flexibility in the law as far as the deadline and what you choose to do. So I just wanted to make sure I understood it. Thank you. Great point for clarification, Jeff. I appreciate that. Okay. So people who can continue to, you know, send in, send in the contribution to your local government support and those who can't have a little bit of an extension and uh, bear in mind, this is not a full conveyance. This is an extension. All right. Um, circling back to budget discussion um, with respect to uh, revenues, Jeff, we had signed or we had voted last week to send out to the school districts, Union 38, Frontier, Combined, Franklin Tech, and all the department heads to review their budget and look at reductions in the expense growth of three to five percent. And I think it's important to not mix words. I dropped my pen, not mix words. You know, most everybody's budget is not flat this year. Like it's not flat in any given year with the potential of the selectmen salaries, but that's a different discussion. Um, that said, uh, we asked for a three to five percent expense review uh, to be reduced on the expense side. And I don't see I, I'm entertaining discussion about any changes in that for members of the board or changes in that philosophy. I think Not, at this point we we probably need to stick with the three to five percent because you know it, it's a little unknown right now what's going to happen with the economy and everything. So, great point. I think we need to be a little prudent in that respect, and then. You know, if we can loosen up later, that's great, but. You, you know, Scott, I, I, I had a conversation with a, someone the other day and, and, um, and they, they, they said that Sundown is the only place in the uh, Commonwealth that has asked for this looking at the budget and looking at a three to five percent and and I don't quite I, I I just in my belief I just don't think that's necessarily true because the recommendation was driven by the MMA and the MMA is represents represents uh, 351 cities and towns across the state and they're and they're they're not the most I would say they're not the most um, aggressive group out there when it when it's talking about budgets and they, they pretty much are, are, are more middle of the line people. Jeff, I mean, Jeff Beck has been, been the uh, director for, for ages and they're, they're pretty much middle of the line. So I, I find it hard to believe that we're the one and only community that's saying, Hey, you know, we really, with, when all this, when all this finishes up, I don't think there's any one of us that thinks that, um, state of Massachusetts doesn't have a printing press that's going to print up money for us. So we have, we have to be able to look at ways of do business, maybe a little different than we normally do. And I would say that when, when we talk about the three, three to 5%, what we're saying is for our, our, our department heads, the, the people that pass along assessments to us, they were saying, hey, go back and look at your budget. Can you do business differently? And and I think if we start, we, we in my opinion, we need to start now um, so it doesn't come falling down on us like a ton of bricks in two months, three months, four months, pick a day. I don't know when that day is. So I would say that that what the board is asking is, is the board is asking to take uh, preventive preventative steps now instead of waiting and at the last minute causing more more turmoil my own opinion right. yeah it allows us to be more re proactive than reactive in that sense 
Yeah, I, I mean, you know, we, 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 we've we talked about, you know, in the in the police budget, they have looking at a, a, um, a, a bringing in a different uh, or a new employee. I mean, that that's an option. We're looking at that in the highway department. Well, you know, if, if you have to look at your total budget and, and can you bring in an employee, a full-time employee, and you're going to save save costs in other directions. You know, you may be able to, you know, some of the businesses that some of the work that you contract out, you may be able to limit that. You may be able to limit part-time, uh, part-time people. And don't get me wrong. When you have part-time people, your, your part-time, it, it's, that person's maybe part-time police officer in Sunland, but he's probably a part-time police officer in three or four other, other communities. And if that person gets laid off in those other community, guess what? We end up, even though he's still employed in Sunderland, he's still, we still are responsible for part of his unemployment insurance. So we have to be careful and, and we really do have to look at what's out there and what other options that we have. Good, good point, Tom. I would say that in our, in our tenure, um, having been in rooms where budgets slide through with, um, slide through with um, planned growth that benefits the community. You know, uh, the, the board town has uh, celebrated those successes. In those years where uh, the revenues have been discussed and those revenues have fallen into place where they were discussed, you know, it's not always a success story. But one thing that I think the, I, my feeling is that this board and the administrations that we've worked with through this board has always been honest about those revenue projections. And it doesn't always sound like sweetness and light. However, it's always been honest. And that's kept us going without too many gyrations for nearly 20 years. So without having a huge, you know, running a town budget is not a, a profit center at all. The goal is to have enough revenue to provide services the town requires. And I think that I feel that the town, rightly so, has voted on those budgets for the last nearly two decades, and they've all been honest. And I think honest is an important part of this discussion. We honestly have to look at three to 5% task reductions or else we look at a problem in a future, a future budget cycle. So that's just honesty. That's why we, that's why we get paid the ridiculous sum that we do. All of us collectively. <laughs> right, Chief? We mentioned okay. the comic relief part of the evening. Hey, you gotta have something. That's right. So, <laughs> a story about that line sometime. Tom used to work, still does work many, uh, off hours and industrial shutdowns. And I remember distinctly being a salaried employee, having worked an insane amount of hours between Christmas and New Year's, not having seen my family during those cycles, sitting down, giving a status update. And then the engineer to my left says, well, Scott, you know, that's why we're paid the ridiculous sum we are. And the reality <laughs> is it was pennies on the dollar because we just worked like 12 straight days through the holidays. So that's a different story. That's a backstory. Okay. Uh, next up, tax deadline, we got plumbing and gas permit schedule industrial fees. Now, they came forward to us with recommendations to include. I looked at those provisions. Tom, this was a driver from uh, gas inspector, plumbing inspector, and nothing looks out of line. Is there a move to incorporate the fees as recommended? Yeah. Motion. Second. Motions made and seconded. Again, this was an area that was not encompassed in our permit fee schedule and now is. All those in favor? Aye. Three to zero. Thank you. Uh, North Main Street plan specs and engineering work, right? So we've got our final ask, uh, well, Somehow CHA and final don't really come to mind. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we've, we've, got a, we've got another ask for the 100% submission documents for our 
uh, North Main Street uh, reconstruction. That ask is about $36,087 for lack of a better description. It looks like, yeah, it's okay. It looks like to date we've spent $243,359 with a total ask of $287,524 leaves about 41,000, some is retained, some is this other ask for submission. Uh, Jeff, as I understand, we're, we don't have 36 odd thousand dollars to pay for this last ask with a vote of the board, is that correct? Oh, I think you're still on mute, Jeff. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, that's right. That, that's my current understanding. I, I want to go through it again uh, with the accountant before I confirm that. But yeah, my understanding is that we've currently authorized, um, I think, 36, the, that 36,000. Is the OA 36, OA 662, that one? Oh, you're back on mute again. You're on mute, Jeff. Jeff, yeah, you muted it again. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyway. so far wasn't working. Um, <laughs> so the, the 36,000 is under the current authorization for the 100% design. And then there is the final um, plan specs and engineering, which would be an additional 41,000. Um, oh, I I mean, and so I, I want to go through... Uh, with the accountant one more time to make sure we're looking at the same thing and, and we agree. Um, so, but yes, it, it, if what I think is the case is the case, then, then yes, we would not have uh, funds currently allocated for either of those. Okay. So if, if that's, if that's the case, is it the prerogative of the board to bring that up to annual town meeting? Yes. Correct. Okay, so Jeff, let's let's close those numbers out. Let CHA know our intent and our schedule, and let them know that it is uh, the vote of annual town meeting and through the appropriation process, not the board of selectmen. Okay. Yes. Great. Let me let me ask this question just to, just because my Libra. You know, I have to live with it. Is this time sensitive? Does it bump our schedule if we don't get this by July? Can CHA work with us since we've spent nearly three hundred thousand dollars, and they're asking for the last forty? I think that CHA would probably be willing to work with us. I still need to confirm because this is a fiscal year twenty tip project that right. Uh, the big federal dollars would still come in um, right. if, if it weren't to go to construction until fiscal year 21. Right. So my, my concern in raising this is by not having this last 100% design and I'm sorry, this last piece, which is planned specs and, and base estimates for the bid process, I'd hate to bump off of the schedule for this last stage knowing that we've spent, as I said, 287.524 to date and miss it by whatever, a year, two years, three years. Remember, we have missed this already by one full year by extending the public comment period and having additional meetings and design reviews. I'd hate to miss this just for the sake of plan specs and estimates as part of the submission. I, I would hope, Scott, that they would be able to uh, work with us and start working on it. I, I think that we de we de demonstrated a, a propensity to pay, so. I agree. I'm sure, I'm sure, Jeff, I'm sure Jeff will use his grand uh, negotiating skills with CHA. <laughs> they don't stand a chance with our, with our town administrator going to bat for us going to exercise the full weight of the title of Sunderland Town Administrator. He'll do fine. Okay, he'll be coming back with his tail between his legs, but... Uh... <laughs> 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 All 
Okay, next up, uh, holiday we, schedule. Sorry, Tom. We may we may have to send the chief there for chief uh, Eric in his backup. I like yeah. it. Break, chief, just send send in the send in the back the screen uh, backdrop that was on our feed while we were waiting for you to join. You'll be yeah. all set. <laughs> Okay, next up, we've got a holiday calendar for the remainder of 2020. That includes Patriots Day, April 20th, Memorial Day. We'll talk about Memorial Day as the next step. Uh, the 25th, Independence Day, July 4th, Labor Day, September 7th, Columbus Day, October 12th, Veterans Day, November 11th, Thanksgiving, uh, November 26th, and Christmas, November, I'm sorry, December 25th. These are being voted because they haven't been voted yet as we were going through our transition. Any discussion? This is in accordance with personal bylaw, nothing added, nothing removed. Uh, motion to accept. Sure. Motion to accept. All those in favor. All right. All right. Okay. Next up, let's talk about Memorial Day Parade. I know we're only a, oh, it sounds creepy, but what? 12 weeks maybe at the most, if I don't have my calendar open. Um, we have to begin considering an adjustment to our Memorial Day parade. It's scheduled, it's composition, and um, I think Jeff and members of the board, if I could ask that we talk to the folks at the rec committee, talk to Jim, talk to Darius about the band, talk to people who are usually involved in this, put our collective heads together and uh, ask if we had to do something different, what would it look like? So that's on the table right now for discussion amongst the members of the board. Very good. Well, that was easy. Jeff, how about we bring... I mean, I think you had a good point, Scott. I mean, you, you're just going to have to talk to everybody and see what they have. I, I mean, I have an idea, but I, I'd like to see what other people thought would think also. And, and again, Memorial, Memorial Day is, is – someone has a, a tradition that, that has gone back, I mean, back into the, the sixth season before with, with our Memorial Day service, the way it's performed. And, and – I, I think, I mean, we, if, if we're still in social dis, you know, in, in a social distancing, we have, we have to um, still respect that and, and, and practice good social, you know, the social distancing. But I, I think there's, there's a, a few things that we can do. Um, and, and I'm not, I, and, and I, I'm, I'm not really willing to uh, give up on, uh, on, the remembrance of our fallen um, members of our community, so that served in the military. I, I'm sure we'll come up. I'm sure we can do something. Um, we just have to think out of the box right now. Right. Just may not be our usual. That's all. Right. Good points. So we, we'll do something. Jeff, can we put put that team together in the form of correspondence or phone call and talk to like Jim Ewan and talk to Darius and other people who participated? You know, we've got the scouts, we've got the fire department, we have neighboring communities. I mean, we could do something really. We could do something uh, both respectful of the current times while being respectful of our past. Absolutely, Scott. We can do that. Yep. And just so you know, I, I did talk to the recreation director, um, and I, I spoke with Darius briefly. Um, and with the band, um, I think that depends on if there is school. Um, you know, I don't think they've been able to practice for two months. So, <laughs> um, but. I'm hearing that there is a preference to do something and to do it uh, on that night. Is that uh, the Friday before Memorial Day? Good point. Okay, so we'll have that carried on to our next couple of meetings and uh, make a decision accordingly. 
let's talk about minutes of April 6th. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Second. We have a motion made in second of April 6th. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, those are in three to zero, please. Okay. I think I want to have, so our next meeting, next, Patriots Day is April 20th. Our next meeting, Tom and Dave, I'd like to have the 21st Tuesday. and just Tuesday. dedicate that to setting up the annual town meeting warrant and motions. Really no other discussion except for maybe update on emergency status. Okay, okay. sounds good. The reason I say that is we don't want to run into, even though we've extended by bylaw the date, there's still the postings that are important to have um, have those dates met. And I don't want to miss that opportunity in either the warrant and or the motions. Okay. okay. Chief, anything else? No, I think everything's good. Thank you. Stay safe out there, Chief, you and the team. Okay, EMD, anything else from you? Nope, all good here. Great, thanks so much for coming in. Peter, you wanna say, weigh in on anything, public comment? Yeah, just uh, very briefly, um, the concern about uh, uh, being responsive to your request for a three, per, three to 5% uh, reduction. Um, we didn't, we didn't uh, try to address that during our meeting uh, several nights ago. Uh, we had a full agenda anyway um, because we hadn't actually approved and had a hearing on the, 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 the original budget. But um, both during that meeting and also talking to Darius separately, um, they're giving it a lot of thought. I mean, it's not like, okay, we're just blowing you off and forgetting about it. Um, they're giving it a lot of thought. They, uh, you know, Really, the concern is um, you don't want to put out because three to five percent, given the size of the elementary school budget, means ninety to one hundred and fifty thousand off of you know what's been requested, and you don't do that without uh, you know personnel moves uh, to a greater or lesser extent. And uh, once you start going public about that sort of stuff, it's it's hard to. Um, you know that has its that has its consequences that are that make running the school currently a little more difficult. Now that doesn't mean you just put your head in the sand and do nothing. It just means that you um, put a whole lot of thought into it. You know, first, and it's only been a few days, I think, since you sent that out. So I didn't feel like uh, you know that was any uh, sense of we were not doing our duty by by coming up with an answer to you last Wednesday night. Um, I would like, uh, obviously, to get something firm from the state rather than a sort of suggestion from MMA in terms of what we might be dealing with, but who knows how long that's going to be and who knows how, when we get it, whether it's actually going to be something that sticks or not um, because they don't know what's going on, what's going to happen. Um, I will say that Ever since this happened, one of the first things while th that the school has done was to uh, put a freeze on current year expenses when, you know, when it was at all possible. Meaning, you know, if you need to spend something that's in the, for, something that's in the budget, okay, you can do it, but you really have to need it because uh, the more we can save money for the next fiscal year, okay, that's something we're trying to do. So that also has been... Uh, foremost in you know their attention in terms of dealing with all this um, and then the other thing I think Tom mentioned I think it was Tom that mentioned was uh, you know talking to the, to the town departments about looking at different ways of doing stuff and that's been front and center of what we've been talking about all along at the school so you know that also is yeah obviously I mean the whole you know that's always part of the discussion is there a better way to do things um, and so I I, I you know, you you may not uh, see it front and center all the time, but that's always part of the discussion. And it's going to continue to be because, you know, these are times you got to come up. I mean, it's standard. If you're in industry, you got to keep every year getting more efficient. Okay. Right. And 
school's not a business, but the school also has, you know, continually trying to come up with ways of how we, how we run a better shop here. So um, I just, you know, I don't have an answer for you in the three to 5%. There will be an answer, you know, when, when you need it, okay, and maybe a little before that, you know, it's going to be there, okay, and we're going to be, you know, responsive and, and responsible, um, but it didn't seem like quite now was the right time to sort of start trying to go public with that stuff. Is that, is that, is that make sense? Tom, you want to weigh in? Um, but Tom, I get, I get absolutely where you're coming from and, and, and I'm not trying to, I know, but you know, Peter, the, the one thing I, I know in, in years past and in, in, in that I know sometimes there's contractual things that you can and can't do inside a contract also. Mm -hmm. And certain things that you have to do before certain dates. Um, I, again, I just, and it, you know, for me, and again, it's about doing, not necessarily trying to recreate the budget from scratch. I mean, that, that'd be kind of hard to do it, but you know, you, you, we, we have to start looking at financially how, how we can pay for two or three months of inactivity. And, and I think that's going to, it's going to be tough. It, it's going to be tough. It, it's, you know, I, I think, you know, you look at the, the, the state of Massachusetts, you know, they just gave what $800 million to, to try to pay for certain things. Well, I know it's in the rainy day fund and that $800 million is a pretty good swap out of that, you know, rainy day fund. So, and, and, you know, the federal government's looking at $2.3 million as, a, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to keep printing money. So we have to be, we have to be prepared at some point. And, and I understand what you're saying. I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I'm not, I'm not minimizing Peter, what you say at all. So it's just, I think we have to, we, 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 and I'd, I'd like to see the school committee in, instead of just coming from Darius or whoever, I like the school committee to be really involved and, and, and to, 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 to really say what important for you guys. And I, I think that has, I, I think as a school committee, I think that's, that's what has to come also. Instead of just waiting for Darius to say, you know, where he wants to go, you guys also, the school committee has to step up and say, these are the things that we think need protecting. These can be, you know, we can't touch certain things. And I think that's, I think that's a job. It, it's a tough job. But right now, it, you know, leadership, leadership's a, it's a it's a big commodity right now, and I think we have to show leadership all the way along. I think that's all the thing that Board of Select was trying to do is say, "Hey, look, let's start talking about this so we can we can get some things on the table, so we're not we're not starting behind the eight ball." That's all, Peter. The the other thing I guess I would I would add would be that while your request addressed the FY twenty one budget. Part of Tom's comment involving, you know, the, the rate at which the state is spending money to, let's say, to support the hospitals, that's money right now in FY20, okay? Right. And there's, uh, you know, I don't know to what extent uh, folks are looking at, well, what happens if our state aid, you know, for the rest of this year gets cut? Um, and that's, you know, I mean, that's, like I said, I mean, the one thing that at least the school did, it was like, Okay, right away, stop spending anything you don't have to spend, which, which also, but that butts right against your, you know, the whole thing, the big picture in the budget, which is trying to protect the paychecks of the people that are longtime employees for the school system, okay, so, you know, by not laying anybody off, which is, you know, the same thing the town's trying to do. Um, none of it's easy, and I don't know. We're trying our best. Uh, and, and actually, Peter, that's going to be probably a dis one of my discussion points to tomorrow at 438, because I probably won't get the first question in, but I'm going to be talking about, uh, be talking about uh, um, cuts that could be proposed by the governor, the C C9, C3s, and all the other great things that all of a sudden you thought you had money, and next thing you know, the money's gone. So. Right. Those are those are questions I, I'm going to try to ask Natalie if someone doesn't ask before or before I get a chance to. Right. 
I agree with you. Okay. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Peter. And just to close out, you know, when I was at called into the school meeting and I want to reiterate the point, you know, we, we have made great gains in continuing to be active partners uh, in Sunderland's support of education. So that was the reason for one of the reasons for bringing it up at the time and being prepared in real term, as opposed to, you know, what can happen, the pitfalls of, you know, bad budgeting. Right. Great. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion from members of the board? One, one thing, Mr. Scott, um, if anybody watching this in real time, Eversource and all the news meteorologists and Dave, the weather guy, and everybody's talking about very high winds tonight. So I would just re just remind everybody, take anything that's loose on your, in your lawn, get it inside. They, you know, last I saw, they are predicting on an area 55 to 60 mile an hour wind. So that could blow a few things around. Good point, Tom. Good point. Jeff, you want to weigh in with anything? Very briefly, I just wanted to echo something you said, Scott, which is the amazing job that, that staff, town employees have been doing throughout the emergency. I mean, I, I know that I'm new here, but it's really reassuring that the quality of staff and the quality of everybody um, that, that I've been working with and even coming to them and saying, hey, you might have to, you know, look at your budgets again. You know, they all understood why, they understood the reasoning. And um, so I just, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to everybody who's, who's continuing to work really hard on, during these really tough times. Thanks, Jeff, I appreciate that. And as I'm sure uh, the residents of the town do as well. Okay, not hearing any more discussion. All those in favor, um, excuse me. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. I almost jump voted, Tom. That's yeah. gonna be a new <laughs> Don't worry, Dave had a big stick for you, Scott. All yeah. right. <laughs> heard a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Is there a call us out at 735. Thank Thanks you. so much, everybody.